Hello, I'm Lisa Bowerman and I play Bernie Summerfield and welcome to Audio Heads Podcast. Afternoon, evening and thus and sundry, the midnight hour with Dorian Gray and Oscar Wilde. This is, uh, this is, you should not look at mirrors and we are audio heads. You know, you know we're part of Geeks Assembled, don't you? Yeah, yeah, okay. So that that's come uh, to to a revelation, and this is a gruesome tale. And um, I just would like to find out what you fellas thought of it, and um, where where you guys think it might be going or whatever. Um, this is actually the fifth series, uh, the first story in it. And um, so let's, uh, let's begin. Um, Texas Tim Wells, what would you think of, of You Shall Not Look at Mirrors? Well, overall, I thought it was okay. I thought it was pretty much style over substance in a way. Either that or I didn't get it. But, I mean, it was excellent as far as the acting and the, the sound and the music and all that was concerned. But as far as the actual plot or the story, I didn't really get a grasp on it, I don't think. I listened to it twice. I did think it was cool that they brought in Oscar Wilde, who's the, actually the creator of Dorian Gray, who wrote the book, um, the, the, you know, picture of Dorian Gray, which is a great book. Uh, but um, as far as this actual story goes, I didn't really, I couldn't really figure out what the hell they were trying to do with it. I, think, I mean, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't bad. It was a nice listen. It's kind of spooky. Uh, as I said, I had listened to the previous series several years ago uh, that Big Finish did. And one thing that struck me about his character was he kind of reminded me of Jack Harkness in a way because his stories he wasn't really traveling in time, but he, you'd pop into time and he'd be there in the story they were trying to tell. Kind of like you know how Harkness kind of just sits around waiting for stuff to happen because he never dies. So uh, same thing with Dorian Gray. He doesn't age, so he'll be there and then you know he'll be there in the World War One or something, and then he'll be in the 1960s swinging you know whatever. So uh, it's uh, it's that kind of character who's, who's basically anywhere in time that they want to tell a story, and that's kind of cool. But like I said, this one. This one, I, I, like I said, I enjoyed it, but I just think it was a bit uh, all about more style than actual substance or plot. Now, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I just, maybe I just didn't get it. Okay. Lee, your opening thoughts, please. Well, yeah, as you say, it's, it's the first story of season five. Um, and, yeah, I can see the resemblance of the comparison to Jack Hartness, Captain Jack Hartness, and also as well, Dorian Gray sleeps with anything as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to side with Tim on this. Um, I've, I've never listened to any of the Dorian Gray thing before, so it came to a bit as a surprise to me that we had narration via Oscar Wilde, and you know with me and narration, I'd, it don't gel with me. Um, yeah, sorry about that. No, no, it's not matter. But that's, this is what we're here for, just to discuss it. Um, I mean, it's called, I mean, the box sets are called The Confessions of Dorian Gray. Um, Dorian Gray wasn't confessing anything in this story to me because <laughs> um, it was Oscar Wilde who was telling the story. Um, and yeah, I, and also we had Jack the Ripper as well. Um, thrown in for good measure. I mean... Yeah, I found it hard to. I mean, I, I know I know little bits here and little bits there of the history of Oscar Wilde. You know him and his marriage and his sexuality and going to prison and stuff. I I, I know all that um, and the creation of Dorian Gray. But I just what I just didn't understand was was Oscar Wilde imagining all this in his head, this tale with Dorian Gray and. Jack the Ripper, or was it really happening? It wasn't really explained. Um, and then also you have the um, remarks about Dad. I mean, I don't know if did he appear in previous stories. I don't know. 
So it was a little bit confusing. If you was, I'll say, anybody out there who's listening to this, watching this now, don't start at box set number five. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I'm, ass I'm assuming to um, get the full full gist of these stories, you have to start from box set one and work your way through. So, um, there must be a connecting theme in returning characters. But, but yeah, the story was sort of well told. The acting was okay, you know, okay in it. But it was just a bit confusing. So I'm, I'm sad with Timmy. It, it, it just, you know, if you if you didn't know what was going on in previous stories, this was a bit of a mishmash. Over to you, Susan. Okay. Um, opening thoughts. Um, the story starts off with Dad, Richard Dad, which is funny because my name, my father's name is Richard, and he's my dad. So that instantly was like, ah, grabs grabs my attention. And then he's um, he's in a in in Africa, in actually Egypt, and he is doing some exploring, and he comes upon uh, a god one of the gods there, Osiris, and Osiris was tasked with terminating terminate, terminating the devil. And so when when dad goes back to London, he uh he interacts with uh and draws some some images of of what Jack the Ripper's doing, some gruesome images, and then he also draws. He's he, he so he ends up, you know, because he he's picturing this and drawing these things. He actually uh, ends up in in jail for it, and so then um, Oscar Wilde meets him, and suddenly. Dad is uh, dad is is sick and he dies and all of a sudden, you know, you, uh, you kind of get the idea that much like the the another fan franchise that I like, the 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 Egyptian god has moved from person to person and now it's in Oscar Wilde. But the the important thing is is that Dad had drawn the drawn the when Dad met Dorian Gray. Dad was the one who who helped draw that uh, that picture that his anti aging thing or or um, no wait that was that was Satan. So um, so Dad recognized that he was after Dorian Gray. And so uh, Oscar basically was sort of following Dorian around, and uh, Oscar was was going crazy, and his um, and his wife ended up sleeping with Dorian Not Gray, wrong. which was. I was going to ask, I mean, so you think this is just all about the madness of Oscar Wilde? Because to be fair, Dorian Gray is a fictional character that he created. So, I mean, if he's actually interacting with him, and yeah. he really does interact with him, which is kind of gross. But uh, then, uh, uh, like you said, that's, that whole series in the restaurant, I don't even know where the hell that came from. I was just like, what the hell are they doing? Because it just, it seemed like they were overtaken by some sort of madness. And, well, he uh, was, he was he, uh, Dorian was just sleeping with Oscar Wilde's wife. You don't do that in a restaurant, and I doubt that his wife would have done that. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You can tell they were overtaken by something. They were doing, they were doing much more than just sleeping. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah, you, you know, uh, screwing his wife on a table where, you know, there's also a bunch of like sort of violence involved in that was. You know, it was interesting. It, it so it had a lot of a lot of atmosphere. Yeah. And then at the end, uh, you know, 
Oscar gets a gets a view of um, of a mirror, and he sees that he's got he's dad. He's he's got everything going on, and that's what it was. It was like you just. Avoid looking at the, the truth of what was happening. Don't look at the mirror. Don't, don't look at yourself. Don't look at yourself. Mm. I, I, well, I, I, I say, for, listen to this, I'm, I'm under the assumption that this was all in Oscar Wilde's head. Okay. Um, it was... But the, if, as it, if this is a series, if this is a series about a character named Dorian Gray... Who yeah. Oscar Wilde actually just met and like you know interacted with, then you know, isn't it possible that that this is, uh, you know, that 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 in 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 that sort of context, they are two separate people, and it's not all in his head. It's it's all. Yeah, I tell you, th this audio makes Twin Peaks look re reasonably. Sane. Sane. I, I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know that the other stories are like this. More often than not, they were pretty straightforward. The ones I listened to from the past. So I'm not sure what where they're going with this, or if it's a. But, but I, I guess what I'm saying is, Oscar Wilde is a is a real person, not yeah. fiction. And by either making him a fictional character, or vice versa, where he's visited by his fictional characters i don't know he wasn't he wasn't that insane i don't think oscar Wilde. he actually wrote quite a few comedies that are pretty funny uh he, he didn't he didn't write he wasn't a horror writer this is only close to being a horror story and it's more ironic than horror horrific it's just a guy that doesn't age because because of a painting right or something like that so sure i mean i mean was i mean we we're getting the narration from oscar Wilde, but as the as the audio went on i got the feeling that oscar Wilde was dying at the end, Dorian Gray says, "Take my hand." Well, and I also, think, I mean, it kept taking weird left turns like that business in the restaurant. That just where did that come from? I mean, I didn't know. I didn't understand. Again, it's very atmospheric, very shocking, and very like. Uh, I'm, not, I'm saying it's not bad, but I just don't get what the story they were trying to tell with it. I think you explained it pretty good, Susan. I don't know about. I mean, you, where you got your cliff notes from, but <laughs> I, 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 I just kind of kept kept a running total of what was going on, you know, and and I liked I liked the the I liked whenever whenever Dorian was around, it was all about sex, and whenever Oscar Wilde was alone uh, with you know that that dad character, you know, in in his mind or somewhere else that uh that the dad character was uh was all about violence and so i think that maybe even like the whole idea was is that jack the ripper was this dad i i, I you know i but they but they said you know somewhat some smidgen through it that there was uh, two different styles going on, two different styles of of killings. One was killing, uh, and, and then the other one was killing and painting with the blood. And there was like that whole that whole scene where, you know, he had tried to save some of the blood from his last killing, but it had coagulated and was unable to be used in ink. Or in uh, as ink in in a writing, so or in a drawing, so yeah, there was there was there was pretty interesting. Mm. Yeah, well, as I say, if, if as as Tim says, uh, that yeah, the previous box sets is sort of listened to, and it wasn't as convoluted as this one. Um, maybe the well, maybe as I said the, the, when this was released, this was going to be the, the last season. Maybe we're going to go out on a, a confused high. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe it was the beginning of a set rather than 
uh, just a, <clears throat> a solo story. He tended to, I believe, if I remember correctly, the the set the previous series I listened to, they were separate stories. You know what I mean? Like, um, and they were, back then that was before the box set craze. They were just single monthly releases or something for part of the year. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, it was I, again, it's more atmospheric and and moody and and strange and crazy than it is. Um, a straight narrative, which is fine. I always like that kind of stuff anyway. I mean, you mentioned Twin Peaks, there you go. So, I mean, uh, but uh, I think it, I think if you're gonna be surreal, be surreal, but you should also have some kind of ending you can interpret. I guess, I'm guessing Susan did a good, better job of that than I did. Because I, again, after listening to it twice, I kind of just like, I really don't want to listen to it a third time. And it's like, I'm not really understanding what they're trying to convey here, but okay. fine. Um, so, uh, Oscar Wilde was played by Stefan Rotary and, or Rotary and Dorian Gray, I, I guess through the whole thing is played by Alexander Valalos. So that's interesting. And then, uh, Tracy Childs is in this, who's in a lot of the, uh, the, other big finish doctor who stuff and uh Fine. other names that i've that i recognize are guy adams and he plays a german officer he's actually one of the ones who writes them and um let's see it was uh directed by scott hancock who you know does a lot of a lot of cool stuff and um and it was written by Guy Adams, Roy Gill, David Llewellyn, and Scott Hancock and Oscar Wilde. So, you know, they've got the cast is in there and the direction is in there. Any any of your you guys have favorite moments or whatever that that or things that, that tripped you out or whatever? Let's start with Lee. Well, as I said, yeah, it, it, the confusion bits, but also the bits with the, with the paintings and the, the murders, the going to such details and sort of madness of the details is brilliant. Um, and also the the history of Jack the Ripper as well. The going to details of that about the letter what was written and stuff like that that is all true. So you know they've got they've got they've got fact in this story. They've got for also fiction as well because you've got a real life person meeting his um, fictional created creation um but every time uh you know oscar wilde and dorian make meet up they do spark off each other brilliant friendship there uh, acted so well um but oscar wilde's wife needs does need a, a big thumbs up here as well um must be i think it must have been tracy charles who played her then um because i think that was the only female character in this Play hours, I remember rightly. Um, I mean, Tracy Charles is a great actor. So, um, but oh no, Joe Joe Joyner played Joe Constance Wild. Yeah. No, okay then. But um, to uh, that actress, then the way she um, comforts Oscar, um, also talks to Dorian, and then in the long run, she doesn't care what. Both of them get up to, um, as long as uh, as long as Oscar's happy with his life. Why can't you know? Why can't any relationship be like that? Yeah, in real life. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I mean, it's a, it is a good tale, but it it is just slightly confusing. That's all. That's the only great. It just it is confusing. That's all. Over to you, Susan. Okay, Tim. What did you? What, what what were your moments or things that you enjoyed? I guess the flashbacks to these murders were pretty interestingly done, and they <clears throat> they uh, again I can't fault the production. It sounds great. I mean, and I think most of the acting was really good. I think it, again, I just think it it's it was hard to follow and hard to keep up with. And there's nothing wrong with that. I like, I like, I said, I like when they do brave stories, or they, or they don't just, you know, cut and paste or duck 
Purdue running through corridors or something. You know what I mean? Like it's better. It's better if they make it thought provoking and interesting. But again, after two listens, I just I said, you know what? This is really a bunch of loud things going on, but nothing really to grab onto. I guess maybe that's the way I felt about it. But again, I, I think you made some good points about the plot that I didn't really catch up on. So there you go. Okay. <clears throat> well, I, I I've said some of my favorite moments already. So um, I just want I just would like to uh, ruminate about the fact that, that we've had uh, so many of my favorite fictional characters have chased this, uh, this Jack the Ripper. I mean, even in time after time, uh, David Warner uh, and stuff, I'm like, uh, I, I mean, it, it's really, it was really an incredibly bonkers time to be in London. I mean, for, for the, you know, I, and I don't, I don't know very much about him, but I, 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 so many of my favorite characters have chased him or done battle with him or whatever. So it was fun. It was fun that these, that these two Oscar and, and Dorian, uh, you know, had had a lot of interaction with the, with him too, or or Dad did anyway. Oh, and speaking of that, Dad was played by Ben Crystal, and that's a name I don't know, but that's okay. There's lots of names that I don't know. Anyway, um, that that pretty much. Unless you guys have have more things to say about it, shall we read well, it? I think, I think um, Jack the Ripper's kind of been done to death over the last hundred years, and that's because it's a mystery they never solved, and it becomes something that you can write stories about because of that reason. Had it been solved back then, it would just been another loony murder that was, you know, and it wouldn't get nearly the attention it does. But that, like you said, there's so many different books and fiction, you know, stories where they their protagonist is the guy that's going to find him or hunt him down or fix it or fall. every now and then you'll see some special on tv about it too like we're going to go and show you where everything was and of course everything's changed since then but they're like this is exactly the spot it's, a, it's got a house on it now but this is the spot where so-and-so was murdered and it's like uh it's interesting but it's it's i don't know i think it's been kind of done to death but there you go yeah yeah that's true but i like it anyway so it, it is a good mystery um Lee, you got anything else? No, not really. Just just remember Whitechapel. Remember Whitechapel. <laughs> okay, uh, so Lee, since you're since you're, why don't you rate it and do your final say? Um, yeah. Well, what can I say? It's yeah, acting brilliantly done, soundscapes brilliantly done. Um, written well uh written so well that it does mess with your head um uh, as i said i'm not keen on the narrating things um I, that's just my that's just my bugbear on, on any audio um so uh, you know i'm i'm giving it a, a seven out of ten i knew it i knew it i knew it i knew it that's good <laughs> Should have laid money ahead of time. Okay, uh, Texas Tim Walls, what would you give this? And your final say. I agree with Lee. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, but I, I have reservations about what kind of story they were trying to tell, I guess. Uh, but it, it was very well made. I'll give it a seven and a half. So. All right. There you go. I bet you didn't predict that. No, I didn't actually. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't really know where you were gonna land i thought you may be a little lower but so uh yeah, he's got a better poker was, face than i am it was very no it's very well made very as always a big finish i mean it's it's unless every now and then they'll have a downright stinker and you're gonna be like why did you waste my time but that's very rare that's very rare so this was this was very good very well made but just i don't know i would like to bit more meat on the bone so that's it all right well um i 
I liked it. Um, like I said about Jack the Ripper, like I said, um, I, I really, I really don't know much about Oscar Wilde actually. And to my, to my, uh, shame or, or, you know, I, I should really, you know, dig into that because you should watch the importance of being earnest. It's very funny. Oh, shall I? Okay. That's what I shall do then. And, um, I mean, he is, he is referenced strongly in velvet gold mine. I mean, like it all starts with him and then traces down through these into, uh, but anyway, for me, um, Hmm. I might have to give this a. Hmm. I might have to give this a seven and a half or seven, seven and three quarters. We'll go seven and three quarters. Uh, out of ten gruesome sex scenes in restaurants. Uh, yeah, so um, for all of that, uh, you know, and, and, and because I also got that, that, that Osiris had jumped from dad to uh, Dory, or to, from dad to Oscar, and uh, so that was cool because of of another fandom that I like. Um, I will just uh, encourage you guys to listen to some of them. I I, w I guess I will suggest that you start earlier on in the series. Um, listen to Texas Tim; he knows what he's talking about, and um, and perhaps go. Uh, get to this one and see what you think anyway thanks for listening to us thanks for watching our video please like subscribe and share this widely um i'd like to thank you two for for joining me here and uh as as some of our other hosts that i like say take care of yourself be excellent and have a great day. Bye-bye.